Interproximal contacts. This assessment is made by viewing the maxillary and mandibular dental casts from an occlusal perspective. The mesial and distal surfaces of the teeth should be in contact with one another. If 0.5 millimeters or less interproximal space exists, then no points are scored. If greater than 0.5 to 1 millimeter of interproximal space exists between two adjacent teeth, then one point is scored for that interproximal contact. If more than one millimeter of space is present between two teeth, then two points are scored for that interproximal contact. No more than two points are scored for any contact that deviates from ideal. Again, the measurement tool uh, will come in handy for us measuring this parameter. Let's measure the maxillary cast. If the gauge is held upright, like so, the edge is half a millimeter thick. So it can be placed in between the interproximal contacts of two adjacent teeth and determine if there is any spacing present. And as we can see on this maxillary model, there is no space. If there happened to be a measurement of this and it falls through at one half millimeter, then I will turn it sideways and see if I can get the millimeter width. Because if it went all the way through, then uh, it would be scored two points. As you can see, none is there. And if we look at the mandibular cast, measure all the contacts. Again, visually you can tell as well as putting the, the gauge in that area. So the total score for this interproximal contact parameter will be zero. Now the final parameter that we'll be measuring will be root angulation and I'll have to set up the view box. This final parameter on the CR eval form is the radiographic portion measuring the root angulation of the teeth. The board makes the assumption that the majority of full mouth radiographs are panoramic. The board also recognizes the limitations of this particular image. Periapical films are acceptable if that is what you use, but the same rules apply as to the panoramic film. In addition, the images may be obtained from a CBCT scan. Now let's read the instructions for the root angulation. The relative angulation of the roots of the maxillary and mandibular teeth is assessed on the panoramic radiograph. Although this is not ideal, it gives a reasonably good assessment of root position. Generally, the roots of the maxillary and mandibular teeth should be parallel to one another or oriented perpendicular to the closal plane. If this situation exists, then no points are scored. The ABO acknowledges the distortion that frequently occurs within panoramic radiographs. The board has recommended the following. Omit scoring the canine relationship with adjacent tooth root when using a final panoramic radiograph. If a root is angled to the mesial or distal, not parallel, and is close to but not touching the adjacent tooth root, then one point is scored for each discrepancy, anterior, premolar, and or molar areas. If the root is angled to the mesial or distal and is contacting the adjacent root, then two points are scored for that tooth. As you can see, this particular case is, which is calibration case number two, the panoramic film displays no problems with root proximity. So the score for this parameter is zero for the case that we have been measuring today. I will place zero on the form. So let me use a example of a case that's actually calibration case number three. And because of research uh, on the distortion of panoramic films over the last 10 years, the board has modified the root angulation parameter that the canine areas in here will not be scored. The incisors and the posterior teeth will be scored. 
And in this pan, you can see some problems. The maxillary left central is tipped distally and appears to be in contact with the left lateral. Thus, it is scored two points. The right central is also tipped distally and, uh, you know, close to the lateral, right lateral, but not touching. So we're going to score that one point. If we look at the rest of the arch, it looks, looks fine. Now, when we look at the mandibular arch, the mandibular left first premolar here is obviously tipped, the root is tipped mesially. However, because it is adjacent in to, the, uh, to the canine area, we will not use it to say it's touching that canine, so we'll just score it one point. The rest of the teeth seem to be fine. Now, let's score uh, the total cast radiographic evaluation sheet for case number two. I've already added up all the parameter scores and we come up with a final score, total score of 23. This portion of the case presentation would likely pass the boards. Naturally, there is the case management form that would have no, have not have to be measured and is part of the final evaluation for the case presentation. We've taken a very long time to measure and explain each parameter. Let me demonstrate what I do to speed up the process of measuring a set of casts. I first pick up the maxillary cast and I will make all the measurements of all the parameters on this single cast. The alignment rotations record the score on the maxillary arch. Then I will measure the marginal ridges, distally, mesially, both sides. Score that on the maxillary diagram. Then the buccal-lingual inclinations that we went over. Okay? And then score that on the maxillary diagram. Next, I will pick up the mandibular uh, one other thing is the spacing, of course, the interproximal spacing. So what I've done is I've scored all the maxillary uh, parameters uh, on that one pickup of the model. Then I will go to the mandibular and I will do the same thing. I will measure the alignment on each side, the marginal ridges back and forth, the buccal-lingual in inclinations, and the interproximal spacing. So I will score all of those. Finally, I will include the models, do the overjet measurements, look at the occlusal contacts everywhere, then measure the occlusal relationships everywhere, and then do the root angulation. So what this does is, is you don't handle the records as much. You score everything on the maxillary, the mandibular, and then the occluded. I believe you can see how this would potentially increase the efficiency in scoring the final records by reducing the handling of the casts. This ends the review of how to measure orthodontic records using both the ABL's discrepancy index and the CAST radiographic evaluation forms. I do hope that the demonstration has expanded and facilitated your understanding of the measurement instruments, which will allow you to more confidently use the forms. It has been my distinct honor to represent the board by demonstrating these creative measurement instruments that will help orthodontists understand their cases evaluate their treatment, and prepare for the ABO clinical examination. Good day. Disclosure. The ABO continually evaluates the measurement instruments and makes changes in the instructions.
Those alterations are posted on the ABO website. Always double check for any recent changes. This demonstration was originally recorded in the spring of 2011.